Welcome back to our ancient past. Previously, we witnessed the origin story of the amphibians as they made their first steps onto land, while predatory fish lurked beneath the depths of the waters. Then we watched how the distant ancestors of the mammals survived in such harsh climates. Afterwards, we met the swamp monsters in what is now Russia. And finally, we saw the devastating effects left by the great dying. Now we venture to the late Triassic, when the earth recovered and a new group of animals has risen from the ashes to claim the world as their own, the dinosaurs. Welcome to the supercontinent of Pangaea, where one of many early dinosaurs take their first steps on these sacred grounds. This is San Juan Sorts. San Juan Saurus, whose name means San Juan Province Lizard, is a genus of Herrerasaurid dinosaur that lived during the late Triassic in what is now Argentina. San Juan Saurus lived in a world that was not yet dominated by dinosaurs. Instead, the Archosaurs ruled. So, in order to survive, San Juan Saurus had to be fast and agile in order to escape predators. Here at the wetlands, medium-sized dicynodonts, known as Ischigualastia, come here to drink and feed upon the shrubs. But today, they are being joined by this female San Juan source. The loud, booming calls of the Alpha Shigualastia can be heard from afar and are enough to scare off the San Juan Saurus. Early dinosaurs were much smaller than any other animals of the Triassic, but they made up for this with their speed, agility, and lightning-fast reflexes, giving them an edge in their respective habitats. Dinosaurs first originated in the Middle Triassic 247 million years ago, with Nysosaurus being the first. But over time, dinosaurs would grow much larger than their ancestors like Nyasasaurus or Scylosaurus and grow into absolute giants, giants that could overtake their Arcosaur rulers. After being forced to leave the river by the herd of Ischigualastia, the San Juansaurus has come to this nearby forest to take refuge from the scorching hot sun.
but it seems that she has stumbled into the territory of a venomous predator, a cobra. The Sanwansaurus is quick to flee at the sight of the cobra. On the other side of the forest, the Ashigalostia herd grazed peacefully, away from the sun. Last year's drought claimed the lives of many members in this herd, and with only four left, this year's drought might claim even more. But if the drought won't get to them, then something else will. Suddenly, the warm breeze changes, and now there is the cold scent of fear in the air. The attacker is a fully grown male Saurosuchus, a carnivorous Rasukian, the apex predator of these lands. One of the Ashigalostia has been wounded by the deadly bite of the Saurosuchus. It will only be a matter of time before it collapses. For now, all the Saurosuchus needs to do is just follow the blood trails. Finally, the Ashigalostia has succumbed to its fate after both blood loss and the deadly rays of the sun finished the job. And now, the Saurosuchus is left with a free meal. Scavengers like the female Sanwansaurus will just have to wait until the Saurosuchus has finished his fill, and then her turn will come. <laughs> 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 
Saurosuchus is an extinct genus of large carnivorous Rausuchian archosaur that lived during the late Triassic, about 231 million years ago, in what is now Argentina. Being an apex predator, Saurosuchus was an enemy of many early dinosaurs, including Herrerasaurus, San Juansaurus, and Cromogosaurus. Saurosuchus mainly fed upon dicynodonts like a Shigualostia. Elsewhere, a little critter is returning to her burrow. This is Chiniquidon, a type of cynodont, ancestor to all the modern day mammals we know of today. Inside the burrow, her pup eagerly awaits for her return. Finally, the mother Chiniquidon has returned from a night of hunting, and she has brought back a dinosaur egg. Until nightfall, both of the Chiniquidons must stay inside the den. In the meantime, mother rests. Chiniquidon is an extinct genus of Cynodont, the same group that the primitive Procynosuchus belonged to. Cynodonts are an extinct group of mammaliaforms that would eventually evolve into the modern day mammals, marsupials, and monotremes we know of today. If it weren't for the early Cynodonts like Procynosuchus and Chiniquidon, mammals would have never evolved, and thus, even we wouldn't exist today. <laughs> Elsewhere, the Ashigalostia herd have paused their migration in order to relax. Even just one of these creatures can drop many kilograms of dung each day. This, of course, attracts dung beetles. Someday, their descendants will be cleaning elephant dung off the African savanna, but their story started here in the late Triassic. This little dinosaur is Cromogosaurus, a basal sauropodomorph, ancestor to the long-necked sauropods. Just like their much larger relatives, Cromogosaurus is also a herbivore, but it would occasionally eat the ticks of the Ashigualostia. This is beneficial for both of them, as one gets cleaned while the other gets fed. But when there are just a couple ticks that the Chromogosaurs can't get to, then a nice dust buff might do the trick. The ticks on this Ishigualostia aren't satisfying the Chromogosaurus, and thus it looks elsewhere. But this does not please the Ishigualostia. It looks like someone has gotten all the Chromogosaurs to himself.
After seeing that the group has had a little too much time to relax, the alpha commands the herd to keep moving. With the herd now leaving, the Kromogosaurs will have to find something else to eat. Back to eating plants it is. After eating his fill, the Saurosuchus has come down here to the river. He gazes into the water's depths, debating whether he should or shouldn't cross the river in order to get to the other side. Eventually, he gathers up enough courage and enters into the unknown. Against all odds, the Saurosuchus has managed to cross the river and make it safely. His fear of the river has finally been conquered. Elsewhere, the true effects of this year's drought are finally being felt by the migrating herd of Ashigwalostia. The adolescent is lagging behind. Clearly, he is dying. Not even his mother will come to his aid. His fate has finally arrived. The herd is only down to two members. In the nearby forests, a mysterious clearing can be spotted right in the middle. This is the work of a 350 kilogram male Herrera source. This clearing will be a stage for his mating dance, and now that he has finished making it, he shall announce it to any females in the area. To his surprise, a female has just arrived. It is time for the show to begin. The female keeps a close eye on any mistakes he might make, but she stays optimistic nonetheless. He may not have impressive antlers or a brightly coloured tail, but one thing he does have is the moves.
now comes the real test. She accepts him. They shall stay together for the remainder of spring, mating frequently, in order to make sure that the next generation will be strong and can survive in these Triassic conditions. Herrerasaurus is, of course, a dinosaur, and dinosaurs belong to the Dinosauria clade, the same clade in which dinosaurs and modern day birds belong to. Birds have very elaborate mating dances and rituals. In fact, there's an abelosaurid dinosaur known as Carnotaurus, which had apparently small and useless arms, but evidence suggests that its arms were connected to a very flexible ball joint that would allow Carnotaurus to wiggle its arms around to impress potential mates. And it is possible that Herrerasaurus also used clever techniques to impress females. Meanwhile at the den, the Chiniquodons are making a risky move by staying outside to do chores at daytime. The mother Chiniquodon is digging an escape bar that they can hide in in case they are attacked by predators, including dinosaurs. However, she must always keep a close eye on her inquisitive youngster, as she could always escape the den and risk being eaten by a predator. But when she isn't looking, the pup makes a run for it. By now, the pup has only ran a few kilometers away from the den. But even though she hasn't gone that far, these lands are still very unfamiliar to her. The source circus was brought to this part of the forest by the smell of flesh nearby. But why look for food when the food is right in front of you? Suddenly, the pup's mother has returned to save the day. The Saurus Circus retreats after being scared off by the mother Chinipodon. Against all odds, the Chiniquodons are triumphant. Night has fallen, and now the dinosaurs and other animals of this ecosystem return to their dens to rest. While the female San Juan Saurus prepares for a night of sleeping, the mother Chiniquodon prepares for a night of hunting. The hunt shall begin. <coughs> Out on the prairies, the Chiniquodon has found something.
A young Kromergosaurus who seems to have lost its way back to its nest. Out at night, all alone, is like putting a target on your head, and the Chiniquidon has found that target. Her hunt has been successful, and now she drags the body back to her den so she can feed her pup. It is the dawn of a new day, and as you can see inside the Chiniquidon's den, the pup and her mother are feeding. Unfortunately for the Chiniquidons, their feast has been interrupted by a swarm of flies. The heat of summer always brings many flies, but not nearly as much as this year. <laughs> to us, flies are very annoying, but to the Chiniquidon, they are a nice little snack. <laughs> But, eventually, she gives up. <laughs> the rotting carcass of the young Ishigualastia, who died of a heat stroke yesterday, is currently being fed upon by the Sorosugus. He has guarded this banquet for 24 hours. Nearby, the Herrerasaurus couple are looking for food, and it seems that the female has smelt the rotting carcass. The Herrerasaurus have arrived. But in order to get the prize, they must get through the Saurasuchus first. It's two against one. Left with no other choice, the Sorosuka surrenders. The carcass now belongs to the Herrerasaurus. The dinosaurs have truly risen to the top. Throughout the Triassic period, giant archosaurs, primarily Ralsukians, ruled the world ranging from Europe to Africa, and even the Americas. But when the Triassic extinction came, most groups died out, except for the dinosaurs, like Herrerasaurus, which was one of the biggest Triassic dinosaurs. And thus, the archosaurs died out.
After being defeated by the Herrerasaurs, the Saurus has found it hard to find food. He has been starved for many days, and now he has been brought here to die. Up in the mountains, the Herrerasaurus couple have decided to call this place home. The female Herrerasaurus is pregnant with the next generation. She shall lay her eggs in mere weeks. Now that the Dicynodonts and Archosaurs are extinct, the dinosaurs now rule, and it will be their clutch who will be left to inherit this prehistoric earth. In the next episode, we shall travel to the early and late Jurassic period, when the dinosaurs reached their absolute biggest. Mm -hmm.